think we have sound. Hang on. As soon as somebody pops on there and sees sound, please let me know. Uh, yeah, it looks like we got sound now. Hopefully somebody... Okay, sounds good. Okay, that that's, that's semi my fault. I just updated Windows to Windows 11. Um, all the settings were straight. I tested the mic, but I did not go in and test StreamYard. So OBS StreamYard, my fault. I should have tested that ahead of time. I do apologize. Totally, I should have double-checked everything. I'm usually really good at that, but it's been one of those days. I use the mic. This is my third live conversation with somebody today. I talked to Dom at what time? Like 11.15 for a while. I talked to somebody around 2.30, uh, and now I'm on live too. So um, it's worked every time except right now. Um, I was using StreamYard, though, so I guess that might have to do with it. Again, I do apologize for that. Um, always something, always something, always something. Not tough times with that. I do apologize. Sound is delayed. Is everybody hearing a sound delay, or is just one person hearing a sound delay? I don't know if I can fix a sound delay while it's running. That's correct. Uh, that's correct. If there is a delay, I cannot fix it that I know of right now. No sound delay here. No, no. Okay. I got a couple people saying sound delay. If, if it's not delaying for a couple people, it you should probably restart. Maybe it's your local one because if it's going to delay, it's going to delay for everybody. Yes, sound delay. No issue here. So I've got several sounds good. Can drink and talk at the same time. I'm good. Good to reload. Yep, delayed here, but it's good. All good here. I would recommend maybe uh, re reloading your screen if it's uh, delaying. Yeah, re just refresh your screen. That's all you need to do, I think. Because more than half are saying sounds good, so I'm assuming it should be good on my end. There may have been a delay. If you don't reload, it may have been a delay from how I started the show. I got it set up so it doesn't... As long as I can get in there quick enough, it won't end the, the transmission anyway. So it held it up enough, and I think that's probably where there's a delay. Um, so anyway, topic at hand, I wish we could just start this all over. I'll probably cut that out, uh, after the show is done, just so everybody else doesn't have to go through that, that, uh, nuisance. Uh, it, it's been one of those days. We've got a lot of stuff going on, um, which you didn't hear me talk about. Um, we do a lot of sales overseas. We're just going to start right into the topic here. I know there's a lot of folks in the chat, but the topic is the most important thing. I did do, uh, uh, prompt to talk a couple days ago to all of our patrons, to all of my patrons, to express a similar one. I went into a little more depth on, on some thoughts, but we're sales-wise. If you weren't around on eBay for like um, Afghanistan, the war in Afghanistan and things like that, when major events happened, the, the trending, look at trending. That's all you really got to do. Look at trending. Ukraine's on everybody's mind. So sales are down on, on many people's sites. We'll talk about mine because we're not really we're still fourth quarter numbers, but you can see that something's going on. We're going to talk about ways to help, you know, alleviate some of that, where you can get those sales come back in in just a few minutes here. I want to get into that pretty quickly here though, but people are are contacting me, and I mean a lot of people, more so than even when eBay did the update when stuff kind of halted for a while. That goes for some online a aspects besides eBay. It's not just eBay. Um, even like YouTube videos, if you're watching and stuff, you can see that even some of the views on stuff like that's down. People are watching the news. They're not spending as much time on that. On top of that, you know, pandemic's just getting over. eBay already projected that sales are going to be down on the platform. eBay projected that. That's already been spoken, not counting, you know, the war in Ukraine or anything else like that. That's, that's already a given. So don't panic. Uh, on that aspect of it. Amazon said the exact same thing. They're going to be down in first quarter for sure. Everybody's finally going back out. The the restrictions are removed and all that kind of stuff. No mask. All those all that stuff's gone around here and it's just back to almost normal life when I'm walking around or doing whatever outside. So people are going out more. It's coming back to nice weather. It's going to start to slow off, not just because of that. It's going to be like double what it would be on a normal time for specific items. If someone can buy an item locally, people want to get out. I know everybody that I know is 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 dying to get out with, you know, it's winter up here. It's been a couple of nice days. Everybody and their uncle was out at the park when we went walking. 
ever, I've, I haven't seen the park that busy in I don't know how long, like years. And this is a massive size park out in the middle. I mean, it's huge. It's like a couple, it's miles all the way around. I don't know how many acres, but it's a, it's a huge park out, out in Ohio here. It's never been that packed. So things are changing. You can look at online. You can look at trending. You can see demographic shift on who's buying and who's doing this and who's doing that and all that stuff out there. It's, it's going to happen worse than last year. That doesn't mean you're going to be dead in the water. That doesn't mean panic. The sky's not falling. Nothing like that. Everything is doable, but you got to take some actions to fix some of that before it actually happens. You know, I don't see any way this going, you know, askew because if, if it doesn't end quickly, gas prices are, are going to be through the roof here. I'm fine. I mean, I'm not fine with that. Don't get me wrong. I don't, you know, we're not going to talk about the issue itself on that. We're, we're, again, I want to stick to the sales. I don't want to steer off from, from that way. It, it's going to be tough for some sellers. I can I can just see it coming because you're it's it's multiple issues. It's gas prices, heating. Again, we're still in winter in areas. If if gas isn't flowing or gas prices go from 68 euros up to 338 euros overnight, that's the real numbers. Might even be higher than that right now. That was from a day and a half ago. So it's going to trickle. It's not just going to happen everywhere in Europe. It's going to happen across other areas because the overall global oil market's going to control that, you know, and prices are going to go up over here. People are going to be less prone to spend money. Um, again, this is what my thinking is. You can take it however you want. I've looked into this extensively. I've watched this happen before on eBay. And I know there's other people in the chat right now that I know are long-term people that, that know exactly what I'm talking about with like Afghanistan and stuff. People were glued to the TV set for weeks when, when that happened. And I'm not trying to promote or do anything about good, bad, or indifferent. I'm, we're not going there. We're just, that's what's going to happen to your, potentially going to happen to sales. So, you know, don't, don't panic, but, but take some extra effort to pay attention more to your business structure, to your money, to your financing, to your, your, what you're spending, how much time you're blowing on, on stuff that's not necessary. This is where it's going to, you know, separate the, the, those who aren't really truly dedicated to those that are, because if you really, really want to do this and you understand that. You, you don't want to go somewhere else. I don't know where I'd even take another job at. I would hate to go back into restaurants and, and all that stuff here. Yeah, I see somebody at State Recycling. Uh, Q1 is not slow for me. It's slow for most people. My quarter four of last year and quarter one, even into quarter two, are about the same. Uh, uh, I mean, literally, there's no drop off. It all, again, goes back to what you sell. I've talked about this I don't know how many times, and you can look at people who sell what I do. I'm not the only one who has YouTube videos who sell vintage. The, the sales aren't stagnant. They keep on going, even in slow periods. If you're selling things that people have to use you know, their, their regular funds for, their living funds for, that dries up quicker than what the, the people who buy our stuff, the, the leisure items, the, the expensive stuff, the stuff they don't need. Nothing I sell anybody needs. Nothing. I don't think there's anything. I mean, even the new NOS stuff, I can't even think of what they would really need. I mean, any. I can't think of any item that anybody would have to have. Shirts, clothing, everybody has to have. Household items, everybody has to have. Kitchen utensils, all that stuff people need to have. So if you're if the folks that don't have the extra money aren't buying, it's going to slow down the categories that are, are are essentials. And clothing is an essential item. I don't care what you say; it's listed as essential item across the globe everywhere you go. Clothing is essential. Maybe not high end clothing, but clothing in general is a necessity. What I sell is is a luxury. It's not needed. It's it's it's. It has no bearing on anybody's. It's not going to help them. It's not going to really do anything specific. Those, those people who have that luxury money, they have extra money. A lot of the times they're retired, and it, it's not the same for, for my demographics of buyers as it is for somebody selling clothing or something. Duncan's in here. Duncan will tell you for sure. He has the same experience. There's probably two or three other people. I can't see all the names across here, but I, I know there's folks in here that, that have the same experience that I do. It's not a fantasy. If you sell certain items, your sales will stay. And if they do drop... You can do something to correct that. 
what we have started to do, and I've talked about our, we do sell similar. I always do sell similar now, three days a week. We may even up it to four days just to kind of level it out every two days to do 3,000. Um, 3,000 listings will end and we'll sell similar. We've been playing around with this for quite some time. Uh, the, the best results we get are, are running, you know, staggering sales. Now, we were running sales. Again, I know some everybody may not be this in-depth into this, but it all plays in. You, you need to know at least the basics and how to get this, this rolling and stuff like that. We're, we run sales after we do self-similar. So as soon as I'm done doing self-similar with two, 3,000 listings, and there's... I've, I've heard from probably a thousand plus people personally that say, hey, this works for us. It works for like 85% maybe. That's probably a pretty honest estimate, depending again on what you sell. So after the sell similar is done, we'll start our first sale. You can't run or start a bunch of sales all at once. We've got four that we routinely run. When one sale is complete and active and all the items are in the sale, then we start the next one eBay can't, for some reason, crisscross and figure out which listing. So what happens if you run a bunch, you start them at the exact same time, you don't wait for the first sale to activate. Some of your sales will only have a few hundred items. It'll just be really screwy, and you'll have to do a whole bunch of them. So we learned, even though eBay doesn't tell you this, you can't go click, I'll start this sale, or you're going to copy a sale over. you got to wait till that sale is complete and running. And if you're, we do them for... Like at 10,000 listings, I'll do one complete sale for another one for 10,000 listings. So it takes like 30 minutes each time I, I do sales. So us starting a sale three, four times a week takes up you know, a couple hours. It takes a, a, a several hour process to get it going. We do other things, so it's not like you're stuck to that. But um, anyway, those are just some thoughts. I know a lot of people may not, may not do that. You may only run one sale on your entire store. I don't know what everybody else does on that. I know what a lot of people do. But with the sales as well, we found we used to just do copy on the sales. You can just do marked uh, sales and marked, and you can click the copy button. You can recreate the sale you already set up, so you don't have to go in and put all those itemized, uh, you know, this category I want items from nine dollars and ninety nine cents to be on sale up to a thousand or whatever. You can set them up. I got videos. There's at least three videos where I show you exactly how to do all of these steps. I'm telling you in here. There's a quite a few recently even. Um, so we figured out, too, if you alter the amount on your sales every other one. So one, I'll do 20. The next time when I hit copy, I'll do 25. Maybe I'll up it a little more or I'll bop it back down to 20. But we rotate those sales, too. And that seems to, to keep things flowing in. What we're starting to do because of the current situation is I'm increasing the amount of my, my discounts now. I'm not going to wait till it gets slowed down where maybe there's not going to be enough people having money or wanting to risk it because the economy might not be so good. So there's money in hand right now. Money's in play right this second. There's still people buying like mad. I, I swear our sales are still fourth quarter sales. Five digits all the way across. No big deal in, in that aspect. But it, at some point, that might not be the case. So getting it while it's good is what we're doing right now. We're... we're taking a little closer look when some offers come in or when somebody places an offer. If it's a few dollars less than I would say I would take, we may be more prone to take it depending on how much the t you know how long the time is it's been up. We're going to aggressively hammer that constantly, listing a certain amount of new items each day, altering a few items each day as well, fixing a photo or two each day. Everything you can do to get yourself on there. Now, we don't promote listings. That would truthfully depend on what category you sell in what are you selling I, I if i did clothing i would have to promote listings we did promote listings with clothing you know that's your call you do what you want on that but the same thing with free shipping i think like 90 95 percent of all clothing we sold had free shipping the number one reason because like at that point it was like probably 70 percent of all clothing had free shipping for a reason too People knew this is the price. They can instantly say the, the shirt's 40 bucks shipped. I can go look at a store site. It says that same shirt, you know, is 40 bucks or 50, 60, whatever. It's instant and easy to see when you do those two steps with clothing. You know, the, the, the aspect of, you know, figuring in free shipping or what. Those are things that I felt you had to do in clothing. And most clothing sellers that I know do at least one, two, three percent uh, promoted. You know, I talk to people all the time. It's even though I don't sell it, I, I've I've seen enough people's internal stores and 
I've talked to enough people in, in the four going on four years I've been up here on, on YouTube. You know, I, I pay attention to that. Maybe I don't do what they do because I don't sell the same things, but I'm always interested. Anybody on my Patreon knows I ask, you know, let me know how that goes or let me this. I always want to get a consensus on what's going on. And, and that I, if I'm wrong, somebody can holler me out I'm wrong on that. But the majority of clothing sellers that I know, I'm like 85, 90 percent, do some form of promoted, even if it's only one or two percent. Um, I know a lot of people even say that the, the, if you're promoting eight percent, you might get the same visibility as if you're doing a one percent promotion. They still promote you. Um, to me, this, the sales and markdown always seem to work better. I, I do 3x in my pricing, so I've already got a pricing structure where I got playroom. If you if you don't have any playroom in there, you can't do anything. When I sold clothing, if I had a t-shirt, let's say, uh, I used to do a lot of old concert t-shirts, 80s and 90s. I, I love finding those. I usually keep them these days, but um, I, I would list those up on there. And th there was always factors that you had to take care of when you're doing that. You I've totally lost my train of thought on that. Um, but clothing-wise, uh, price-wise, you can't overprice it. I couldn't. I if if, I, if a T-shirt similar goes for twenty-five bucks, I'm not going to be able to get forty bucks. If I price it at forty bucks, I'm going to be ignored. If everybody in that category is selling for twenty-five bucks free shipping, and I want to do twenty-five bucks in charge for shipping again, I'm not going to be looked at. So uh, you've got to take those in, in, into account. Whatever you're doing here. Um, perceived value is huge in everything that we do, not just perceived value, but the whole aspect on pricing and running sales and, and, and the discount numbers and how we play eBay system. Anybody who's doing South Similar, anybody, not just us, anybody out there is doing South Similar and, and you know ending in South Similar, you're playing eBay system. It's not something eBay's telling you to do. They don't even tell you that it does anything, but we all know it does. So we're playing. We're using eBay's own setup to, to work against them, to be able to get the views. And, and again, the self-similar, the sales, it's a constant thing. You have to constantly as well send out offers to watchers 24-7, as much as you can send those out. These days, even when I'm up and I go upstairs or something or I'm, I'm out and about, my phone's with me only for offers to watchers. That's one of the easiest things you can do on a, on your phone for, for eBay. Offers to watchers or answering questions. I answer questions as frequently, if not more frequently, than than I'm doing offers to watchers. Now, if they're BS questions, I got a lot of people that try to hit me up on e eBay for info and you know price. I, I don't, eBay is my business. I don't do any relations with, with anything other than buyers, potential buyers on eBay. That's as everybody should do. Your, your site should be for your the buyers because that's that's what you're there for. That's my take on it. But um, do I sell on Etsy? Oh, your, he's asking somebody else. I do sell on Etsy. Uh, we have Amazon, Walmart, Hip, a bunch of other places. There's a lot of little sites on there. That's another aspect I would honestly, sincerely look into. If you've got a lot of listings on one site, just on one site, some sites can have issues. Some sites maybe aren't getting the best views for the items that you have, and other sites would be more practical. I know people that do better on Poshmark than on eBay for clothing. Um, as I said, I was talking to Don Primetime Treasure earlier about some other places. I'm not going to get into the private discussion, but um, there's a lot of places out there. In some places, people seem to be doing better from, from what I've been told. I haven't seen it myself because I haven't done the other ones, but are doing better in certain categories on, on certain platforms. I sell certain items for more on, say, Amazon versus eBay, even collectibles. Um, Etsy may be better than eBay. Hip. Geez, I'm really surprised sometimes that I'll sell stuff higher on Hip sometimes than I ever would on eBay. Um, it, it's the clientele. Each site these days has a different type of clientele. So you've got to play that to your, your benefit too. It's not just always eBay. eBay is not the only game in, in town. For some items, they are. For views, for some people, they 100% are. But if you're not going to branch out and at least check it out a little bit and see how it's going, you might be missing some opportunities is, is the, the point here. No one in their right mind would sell certain NOS items on eBay They'd, they'd put them up on Amazon because you'd have a higher return, a higher, higher ROI. You can send them in FBA, uh, FBA and you'll get the buy box in some, some cases, depending on the items you're in. If you're getting buy box, you know, that's that's huge. That's your top of the heap on if you're buy box on Amazon. 
It's like being promoted almost on the top page on eBay or something. Your item scrolling across the top or something. Almost that good in some areas. So, again, if, if you're doing certain things or selling certain things, you, you've got to research the, the best opportunity for those specific items. We play every market, and I, I'm going to hit over to the, the comment section in, in just a minute here, but I do a pros and cons. I've, I used to sell clothing, and mostly clothing and books, for quite some time. There's probably still some old videos up here on on YouTube from four or five years ago when we were doing clothing. There's hauls, I know, still on us finding clothing and stuff. We did okay, don't get me wrong, but for time factor, uh, from f taking more photos and return rate and all this stuff, it wasn't practical. We didn't just say, hey, I'm just going to sell the stuff we're selling. I wasn't into the stuff that I'm selling now five, six years ago. I'd buy it occasionally. It was cool. I never thought about the value-wise. I never thought it was a real thing you could make a living full-time reselling. I didn't honestly think that. I've talked about this. I never, ever would have believed that was possible. Obviously, it's 100% possible. But So I sold all the stuff everybody else sells. We just did a pros and cons list as to what's the best aspect of selling this versus that. What are my numbers show me? What do... Believe, I know everybody says eBay doesn't give you a, a, a lot of information, but for the most part now, not so good as with sales manager and stuff that used to be great, but there's enough information where any average person out there could you know, drop this into a spreadsheet, whether you're using Google Docs or something or Excel, whatever, they all work the same. You could drop enough data from your, your sales records and your unsold items and you could do some comparisons you could easily get your ROI broken down in a spreadsheet where you're going to be able to see which category items give you the most money the most the highest return on your investment the highest the highest ROI that's a pro uh, the, the the items that give you the most money is, is is what you want to sell you know if you're if you're your your percentage of profit is you know 15 20 percent I mean I can get that by and wholesale offline from a major company, which I've showed before too, I can buy wholesale items and make that much on them without doing anything. I can drop ship items almost to that extent or do a wholesale purchase of 1,500 units and you know make 10, 15% without much, of a, which, without much of a trouble. You've got to have money to do that though. You've got to have money tied up in the, into merchandise and you know, shipments and stuff like that. We picked items that have almost no return rate. I don't care what you're selling. But th this is what you need to do. You need to pick items that you've done the pros and cons on. Biggest pro, uh, con on clothing, what I hear from everybody, is the return rate. People rent them. They'll wear them for 30 days and then send them back. Five, six years ago when I did clothing, I didn't have those issues. But, again, it's gotten much worse. I'm not saying it didn't happen, but it was nowhere near what people are telling me. Some people, it's 20%. Now, here's another number that I think everybody should know. The overall return rate of online purchases last year was like 20-some-odd percent. In some categories, it was as high as one in three. This is national. These are, these are international numbers. This is the industry quoted these numbers. I'm not making these up. These are, aren't fictitious. It's like one in three items was returned in certain categories, like clothing. So if it's NOS is having those return rates, you as a used seller are going to have return rates. Again, that's a con all the way around. Do I have to pay to promote the item? That's a con if you do. Can I use eBay's free and, and price structure it where I can have some playroom? That's a, a pro for what we sell. And you, you can sell anything you want, but even if you're going to be a clothing seller, do a pros and cons on the types of clothing you sell. Figure out what's the best to look for every time you go somewhere. That should always be the first place you look if you go to a thrift store and you're looking for clothing. Look for the items that, that give you the most return on your investment first. Scour the store for those and then worry about the lower-lying the lower lying fruit if that's what your ploy is. I, I, I like records. I mess with records a lot. I know if I'm you know search, searching for a specific genre, that those genres will do far better than anything else I sell in, in those categories. And in fact, one of my highest uh, ROI categories is 45 records by, by a thousand times. I mean, I, I've the most expensive items we've ever sold have been records in 45 specifics in one single niche. We've sold them for like 4000 a piece for something we spent a quarter on. So there's certain items that I'll drive in, you know, a long distance to get because I know that the ROI on those will be far more worth the investment 
the time investment, the, the labor and all that aspects on it. But pros and cons are why we sell what we sell. End of story. I didn't know the categories when I, when I said, hey, I'm going to pick this or do that. We found some. They sold okay. We figured out the ROI was horrendous. The amount of, of time it took to do the, these types of items was was easy. was quick. We could get so many more done on it. Again, it doesn't matter what we're talking about here. You pick what's the best, best items to sell. What do you think a, a national retailer does? They're not going to take something in their store if their ROI on it isn't good, if their amount of sales for that isn't good. They're, they're not going to do it. Retail, like one little retail slot is, is a fortune for a company to, to have to shell out money for. So if you want to get into a store, it's a fortune. I worked in, I was a manager at a grocery store chain here in Ohio, Central, or um, what was it, Central... Oh, I worked for Food Town, and then there was another one, Central something. They owned like a two or three name stores. But anyway, I, I've seen the industry in the, in the grocery store chain. They, 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 they maximize on pennies. So every penny they were worried about, every little thing they were figuring out, is the fruit from this person better than the fruit from that person? Is, you know, is this dairy producer the best one? You know, that's all the, the, the type of stuff you do. When I ran restaurants and we supplied regional for, you know, millions of dollars worth of food for multiple restaurants, you, you're figuring out what's your best best bet. Even shipping, deliveries and all that stuff. All that stuff counts. So items are key and essential. Uh, steering us towards the item conversation here. Items are key and essential. You pick the right items, you're not going to have as much problem. You're going to sell throughout the year more so than you would in certain other items. If you're selling clothing, winter clothing is going to start to die off. So what's going to happen? You need to switch it up and get rid of the winter coats or hold on to them the next year or leave them up because it's winter somewhere all year round. Won't necessarily be selling overseas, but again, keep that in thought. Uh, you know, you got to switch up if, if you're selling certain types of, of material, clothing and things. If you're selling, even say sports cards, video games, and things, if you know Super Bowls going on, times to that are, are sold best when the Super Bowls going on, or World Series is going on, or NBA champion, whatever, whatever you're doing, you, you have to tie everything to it. What's the best pros? What's the best cons? Is this the best time to do? Is that the best time to do? We 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 plan everything out. I guess that's the gist on that. I know I've got quite a few of my feed seems to be scrolling pretty quick today um lakeland waynes aliens yeah aliens 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 people say why haven't aliens landed on the earth and with what's going on now why would they who would they talk to i this is this is a perfect example of why aliens haven't landed on here and said here we are we're we're, we're violent people for the most part it seems but anyway Poor Don. Yeah, thank you there, classic rock lover. I'm back up to the top. We're going to try. I can't see half the top part because once it scrolls down a certain spot, I can't see it anymore. Um, jocks, jewels, gemstones, and precious metals. Well, welcome, welcome. Uh, Thomas, how are you doing, Thomas? Doing it wrong. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, I need to get a, a B-roll where I can just play some footage or something. I, I've got stuff sitting here. I just always forget to set it up. Um... Let me pop on down here because I think we're still in the can't hear you stage. Um, okay, we're going to pop down to here. I've got Anne Febrero, Rennie Duval. Are you a collector? Welcome, welcome. Yes, The Outer Limit. I remember that show. I don't know how many other people remember The Outer Limit, but Hudson Resells, how are you doing? David Varner, welcome, welcome. Eric Grot, Hot Idea, Judy. Schlutz these. Uh, let's see here. Just Jana. Tim Costner, how are you doing? Laura Johnson, welcome, welcome. Banana Lana Shop. So that's a good name. I like that one, honestly. Busser, Busser, Felix. Hey, Felix, how are you doing? Atlas Attic, how are you doing? Yeah, if, if it is a delayed or off, the sound is delayed, just re reload the screen. Trina, how are you doing, Trina? Good to see you in Renner Crow. Welcome back. Uh, Post Road Photos. Hey, Marty, how are you doing? Jiminy, flip it in the house. Yeah, I'm sure it's it was delayed due to that. 
I do like Japanese movies, Atlas Attic. I, I am a fan of those. Yeah. Carrie Berry's mom, how are you doing? Michelle Mernick, how are you doing as well? Uh, yeah, if we're still delayed, there isn't much I can do at this point. I'm going to try and get down to the feed a little more. Yeah, there's no multiple windows. Everything else is, is closed off on here. There shouldn't be any delays or anything else. Uh, again, I just update, updated to Windows 11 this morning. I tested it for like an hour. I ran already. I even chatted, as I said, with, with Dom can attest it was all working fine earlier. But again, StreamYard must have had an update, and I know there's a Realtek update as well as... What's the other update that just happened? I know OBS updated... The framework updated too, which kind of ties some of that together. So I'm sure that's what it is. I refreshed it, at it. It's all good now. Okay, so we're fine. Listening via phones versus computer. Yeah, I don't have any of that, and I always have it set the same way. I didn't alter any settings. It must have been one of the updates that physically altered it. When when Windows installs, the Windows 11, if you didn't install it yet, but when it installs, I had this darn beeping. It wouldn't shut off, so I had to shut off all of the the uh, Windows notification sounds for everything because it was the only thing I could figure out how to shut it off. Everything else I tried. And I'm, a, I'm really good at Windows. I've been using it since like 95, before 90, Windows 95. But uh, let's see here. Relentless Hagler, how are you doing? Tank Prism, welcome. Model 101 Series 800, welcome, welcome. PK Bailey... I know I'm missing folks. I do apologize. Yeah, it depends on what you're selling. I can't stress that enough. I just wished... I felt locked and trapped in clothing and books, to be honest with you. And I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. And this isn't trying to be a bash on clothing, but I get this question all the time. Why, you know, how do you find it and all this stuff? I was so... I just hated selling clothing. I hated the aspect of having examined. I'm not a big clothing buff. I don't have to have expensive clothing. I don't care about all that stuff, truthfully. It doesn't, it doesn't drive my world. I'm not impressed by whatever somebody wears. I think the person themselves is more impressive than the, than the clothing. One, one of the, the richest people I've ever met, somebody that my father knew, he dressed like a bum. I mean, I, I probably, people probably might say that about me, but he had holes in it. I mean, it, when holes weren't cool, let's put it that way. And he drove an old beat-up car. The guy had a Rolls Royce at home. I mean, he, he anyway, I, I'm not impressed as much by that. I'm impressed by the people themselves. I had a boss named Lou. I've talked about his whole video on Lou, but um, he impressed me just because of him. I didn't, it, it wasn't anything else. I could care less about someone's like that. So uh, clothing for me just wasn't a fit. I didn't like the... The fact that I had to take extra photos and do, even if it says a size on it, if I didn't, if it was a large and I didn't put the, the measurements, somebody's going to have a problem at some point with something. So we ended up doing it for everything. And then it, it cut off all the questions. It just takes so darn long to list even like uh, eight items in an hour for some people, eight pieces of clothing. You got to do at least six or seven photos these days to be competitive inside, outside, if it's, you know, pullover, sweater, jacket all that kind of stuff, you know, and that's what we did. We, we took the extra effort, but when, when you look at the ROI, it wasn't worth it. it. It wasn't worth it. And then when you looked at the cost that, it, it, you know, the, the initial cogs of the item, the cost of the goods sold, the item itself always cost more than the items we're selling now, always. It was always more expensive for us to purchase clothing to resell than anything else that I do. I can get electronics. I can get a VCR for five bucks. I can barely get a T-shirt around here for five bucks used. So that's that's the plan. People don't. They're they're a uh, piece of clothing is a necessity again. We're going back to necessity. We we figured out that whatever is a necessity has has only a certain longevity in certain certain items. It has a lot of competition, not just other resellers, but brand new items, brand new items. So that was my my worrisome on that. And that's again why we sell what we sell. You might have different results. You might find something else that I could never sell um, much better than I could sell it here just because it's not available in quantity or it's not something I, I could figure out how to source effectively. Some of the people that I know that sell weird stuff, they just happened on it. It wasn't something they were looking for. Most of what we sell wasn't something that I said, hey, this is a specific item. But we looked for certain items and we looked for you know a grouping of types of items in 
what we sell is what, what's in that grouping. I would take a hundred other different items similar like, like than we sell now if I could find them. So again, it depends on your local area to some extent. Most of what I sell right this second, though, I got I could buy anywhere else I've ever been. And I've been all over the country, all the way to California. We've spent some time in New England. I worked in Texas, the Dallas, Fort Worth area for a while. I've been from I lived in Florida for many years. I was at Disney. So I've I've sourced from, you know, Florida up Ohio, Michigan, all the way up to Mackinac Island. We've done it all the way from Boston down to North Carolina, all the way across to um, California. I was in, in um, Nevada. I did Arizona before. Um, Phoenix, I liked Phoenix. Uh, Colorado was very nice. But, I mean, all these places I was able to source similar in like items. Uh, I picked the low-lying fruit is what we sell. I always say that, and I do believe that's honestly the truth. I think this is, if you can break out of the mold of, of going to the same places you were going beforehand and, and are ambitious enough to not give up after, you know, a month or two, you you can make it. You can get into these other, other areas. Uh, and I'm not just blowing smoke. I, I promise you that the the luxury items like what we sell, stuff that people don't need, sells all the time. Because you don't have to have... They don't even have to have a job, a lot of the people. They might be retired and do this. I don't know. I know a lot of the stuff we sell goes to professors even at some, some point. And I've sold to movie studios and for, like, recreations and stuff. Like, rappers rappers usually go, like, an old candy bar wrapper or a label off of can from 1800s or something. Those almost always these days go to artwork companies and things like that or businesses that do art recreations or... Even uh, prop houses. There's two or three prop houses that I know for sure are our followers, our stores, their favorite, and they come back on a routine basis. Um, again, that's why repeat business is so important. But I know I'm rambled for quite a while. Let's see what we hear. Uh, yeah, you're going to have, Atlas Attic, you're going to have good days and bad days. Um, I, I'm not worried about the, uh, an individual day being off or something like that. We do projections. I, I can't express how important doing projections is honestly to keeping track of where your sales are going. I know you can look at the eBay numbers and all that stuff, but I'd rather know my numbers minus you know, all, all my fees and stuff. And, and I'd rather know based on those numbers what I'm projected to do day two, day three, day 10, day 12, day 15. And if those numbers, my total projected at the end of the month is going down i do something about it again sales sales and markdown i'm we're going to start doing more uh, uh end and sell similar on a quicker basis so i think we'll just do them every two days doesn't matter what day of the week it is and then do sales whatever we have to worry about from that point on i think we'll try that and see what happens um in my opinion that getting ahead of the game is is the best way to do it with like uh, running bigger sales now while people have money people still have money a lot of people aren't thinking it's going to go anywhere or we're not affected so much because we're way over here. It's just going to take a little time for it to potentially start backing up. If the European market stuff's more expensive, the merchant, a lot of the cars, a lot of stuff we, we have and use on a daily basis comes from overseas. So those prices are going to rise if they've got to transport them over here on you know, ships or whatever they're doing, as well as the factories making them overseas, their heating costs, uh, you know, the cost of getting certain items. Maybe some supplier won't be able to ship anymore because of, you know, uh, embargo or whatever, whatever else they want to do about it. So take those all into consideration when you're, you're worrying about it. You've got to protect your business from any potential and do it proactively. Don't wait till it starts to happen. Make sure that you are, or at the least, the very least, have a plan of action so you know what you want to do, what you can do, what's available to you. If at the end of the day, you know, people are going to wait till the end and everybody starts pushing sales, trying to get all that in, there's just going to be a flood. It's going to be a race to the bottom, you know, in certain categories, which in certain categories, it's almost a race to the bottom all the time. Now, if you're enjoying the conversation, I'm terrible about saying this. I've been on for a while. Um, we've got 300, what, 38 people in house. Uh, please slam that thumbs up. I got 120 th thumbs up on there. Um... Yeah, you're over uh, estate recycling. Year over last is what you're you're talking about there. So you compare quarter one this year to quarter one last year, and year over last it should be up. But you know, 
That's why I say keeping track of your sales. If you're just starting off, start keeping track of them in a spreadsheet. Write down some things like this happened, that happened. So when you're going back to see what your sales were the last year, two years, and the longer you do this, you'll have more and more information. You'll know that you know a week before a certain holiday, certain things sell better or sales are up or sales are down. Every year at this day or that day or you know election day, whatever, there, there's spe uh, specifics that happen every year. If uh, a holiday is on a different day or, or situations change and a certain activity is on a different day, you can look and say, hey, well, they just moved the date and you'll be able to account for that. You'll know it ahead of time. Again, this, this is going back to being proactive. If you know ahead of time that it's going to be slow, on this day, you do something ahead of time. I run a sale, a little higher sale on those a couple days that it's slow every year. And that makes up and takes up the slack for those. I listed a couple hundred more items extra ahead of time that, those couple days. Whatever whatever you, you can weasel yourself into doing. I don't know how much inventory everybody has. So uh, The other thing on inventory, too, if you don't need it or it's not going to sell quick, you might not want to be holding up a lot of money in stuff that you're not going to be able to sell immediately is, is my other thought. If you got the money to do it, be my guest. But if you're new and you're you're worrying about flip to flip, you got to be a little more cautious on what you buy uh, to make sure it might not tank the next week or two weeks down the road. No one's going to have money to buy whatever it is, or it's too much of a luxury item, or you know, all that kind of stuff comes into play. Proactive is the best way to do it, though, of course. Yeah, and even quarter quarter. We're talking about quarter two. My quarter two is usually right up there up to quarter quarter four three and fourth quarter first and second quarter i mean i don't really have much of a, a slack down there might be a week two here maybe week two there that's literally about it and then we run sales i might run a 50 percent off sale during those times again i do i have a 3x pricing structure so even if i run 50 percent off i'm still making more than the bottom end i wanted for that item i wanted a third i'm willing to take half it's it's playing the game again that's perceived value somebody sees wow it's 50 percent off that's a huge red flag wow i better grab it now limited time only you do a two-day sale 50 percent off you get a lot of sales you know again you can't do that if you're selling clothing you know and only making eight or ten bucks you'll be dropping down to just a couple bucks total out of it and that's just not worth my time i don't like to ship anything either that's three dollars four dollars you know, it's, it's just not, again, not worth my time. It's not worth my time to ship a dollar item. It's not worth my time to ship a $2 item. Even if it's dropping in an envelope, you've got time and you've got, you know, cost of the supplies and, you know, everything else like that. It's just I'd rather waste that time on listing something that's going to sell more, sell, sell for a higher price, or in cases of new, new resellers, sell quicker. The quickness is the, the biggest aspect. If you're on the ball with your listings, you've got tip-top keywords. They're placed correctly, farthest to the left, the most important ones. You've got really popping images. You zoom in if it needs a zoom in. No junk that doesn't belong in there. Nice bright white where it just pops off the page. You know, keywords, again, as I said, are super, super important. Pricing. Those are the three most important aspects of a listing. Pricing, your title keywords SEO and then the the image itself if you mess up one of those the item might not sell uh, anyone want to be yeah we're not here to buy on here no no offense but I don't let other people offer when I'm not trying to get people sales on my platform on on YouTube yeah, Banana Lana Shop. Make sure your, your listings are tight. Spend some time. If you're not selling stuff, go back and look at those listings. I hear that a lot. I hear people, well, I'm not selling it. I've got to keep putting new stuff up. I can put new stuff up all day long. If it's not good stuff or stuff that has a certain base of people, it's not going to sell. It doesn't matter. You can't just list stuff just to list stuff. And a lot of people don't get that or they, they're not sure on what's worth their time or not. And that's, that's something you got to learn. It's going to take time. If you get burned out and, and don't want to invest the time to figure that out, you, you might be in the wrong business. You know, If you're going to bail immediately when something goes wrong, you might be in the wrong business. Now, some people may not be able to do it, maybe because of the area they're in or what's available or the economy or some people in other countries, some people in, in certain states, there's no viable sourcing locally and they haven't figured out the, the long distance sourcing yet. You know, there's an option to source from wherever you're at as long as you've got an internet for most people. Just, you know, you, you just got to branch off. You've got to invest the time. I've invested more time than, than I would care to admit into uh, doing this. 
I'm constantly, man, me and Dom were talking earlier about time frame put in. I don't know. I've been doing 14 hours mostly. And, and then I'm still like, I don't want to put the phone down sometimes and stuff. And I'm, because I'm still sending offers out. So I'm almost, my eyes are shut. Um, I'm not burned out on it. I don't mind doing that. It just feels like if it's me, I guess. I don't know. I'm addicted to doing it, I guess. Handmade gnomes do very well from what I saw, actually. We were at, um, what's the name of that store? It's a German store. Aldi's. And people were flocking in. The second time we went there the other day, too, they, they get these elves in. And everybody swamps the store. There was people waiting outside in line just to get these elves. But it's past Christmas, so I'm still surprised they're selling so well. Yeah, Banana Lana shops, clothing is essential and plentiful. That's that's bad for those who want to make a better better day of it and just wanted to sell clothing for the most part. Not everybody. Um, I, I just don't like p piddling around with the small small profit. I, I really wished everybody who really wants to dig in and, and develop a, a true-fledged business, not just I'm um, flipping, I'm flipping, I'm flipping and not getting anywhere. And just paying your bills isn't enough for a lot of people. I can't just... I'd feel trapped if all I was doing was paying my bills and that was it out of out of doing this for years. If it's constantly the same or sales are going down or I'm not advancing my business, that would that would be depressing to me, I think. Um, it, it would be depressing going to work for somebody else again, too. I don't know what, what, what separates people that I know and me and, and what separates some of those who give up or not. The only thing I would suggest is... I don't want to work for anybody else, and that's that's the biggest motivation I could ever tell you. The freedom aspect is is huge. The aspect that I don't have to listen to some idiot who doesn't know what they're doing, and and that's half the time when you work for a company. The managers were like recent high or college graduates who went and took business 101 classes and figured they knew it all. But the real world isn't the same as as a classroom in my book. It just doesn't work that way. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, now, Banana Lana Shops, I would not agree with the also make sure you have uh, at least 10 quality photos per item. It, the, the amount of photos, I don't care what eBay says, that's not going to be a factor. You don't have to have 10, no disrespect to you at all, but you don't have to have 10. I got two for 90% of our items probably, flat items I should say. It, look at the item itself. Look at the specific item if you want to know what you should do. Don't listen to eBay. The, the listing quality report is a piece of crap. It, it, in my case, it's it's totally useless. And in the dozens of them that I've personally been shared from people who I talk to, patrons and things like that, it's all crap. You know, they can say whatever they want. If you have a, a four or five good quality photos of an item and that's all it really needs, the, the 10 aspect doesn't mean anything. If, if you, we know how eBay works with the photo quantity. We, we know because they, they lost our photos and we were able to gleam into their system on how it happened and what happened and what they spoke. As long as you've got more than one photo, eBay has a way to track and, and state, hey, yes, they have more than one photo. I don't see them spending the extra time, effort, or writing the extra code with how inefficient and glitchy they are now to figure out any more than that. One photo stays with the main frame of the listing and the other photos are in a different server. Only one of your images is done that way. And you can't edit those photos now, too, with the ones who lost them. The eBay lost like 98 million users' photos in your listing. So that's how we know how, how they're split up. They're not all in the same place. They're pulled in. They're, they're pulled from other servers. They've got servers just for photos, obviously. So, again, I don't think they count them like that. I think those are just them thinking because this is what they want and all that kind of stuff. If if it if you're selling a postcard, don't go taking more than two. You can do uh, sc <clears throat> scan front and back, and just blow up the front so you upload the front twice. And that gives you three photos. I've never had a complaint. Don't have returns. I don't have anybody asking for more photos ever, ever, ever. No one ever asked for more photos, and I still sell the items. We're still we've been doing five digits for years. So the the, the amount of photos. It depends on what you're doing. If you're selling clothing, six, eight photos was usually what I tried to get away with. If I'm doing a record set, like an LP or something, five. If I'm doing paper, it's a two scan. If it can fit my scanner, it's two scans. Nothing more ever. If it's an action figure, the most I would ever do is four. If it's got damage, I might do 
uh, one that shows the damage of those four. I, the, I don't I don't rush to get all, I don't listen to eBay and most of that stuff. I don't worry about the recommended uh, item specifics. It's a waste of time. I, I pick the ones that you have to put in. Everything else seems to be a total waste of time. The, just again, why I don't pay any attention to the listing quality report at all. I would wouldn't recommend it to anybody personally. I think it's a piece of crap. It's not effective. It's just trying to get you to do what eBay wants you to do. They still send me messages. I've still had eBay call me and say, you got item specifics that are recommended, blah, blah, blah. You need to fill them in, blah, blah, blah. My guess is at some point they'll probably penalize people for not putting them in and won't show those items. That's, that's going to be my honest opinion. I bet you they will do that. Oh, let me see here where we at. Um, eBay, just because eBay says that that's what you should do, again, I'm no disrespect, but I, I don't listen to what eBay says anymore. They lie to us. They've, they've said so many falsehoods. The whole aspect of item-specific, if you can't figure it out, is that they can use those item-specifics to charge people who get them to do the promoted advance where it's a pay-per-click. That's where, how else can they target them? eBay isn't, isn't, in my opinion, smart enough to get them targeted without doing the item specifics. That's all it is for us. And if you look at what the CEO said, they're going to, they're, the, he's, he was blowing off like, you know, losing revenue, no big deal. We got, we're lo losing gross merchandise volume. We got it made because all we're going to do is gather it, increase the, the sale or the, the, the revenue through um, uh, advertising and promoted listings. So all the investment into changing this over is just for those two purposes. That's it. That's it. End of story, in my opinion. And I, I've talked to too many people who feel the exact same way, and not just feel it, but know how things work. I have an IT degree. I know other people that do that I've talked to who, who said the exact same thing at the same time. That's, that's what it is. It's their way to control the results and to be able to market those results to people through pay-per-clicks through promotions and things like that. That's what they want. That's exactly, they've said it. He's word for word said that. Go ahead and again, watch, watch his speeches. Purple Rain, good evening, uh, Reba Eki. Hopefully I pronounced that right. When you end uh, the listing, the cell similar, does eBay delete those photos? They don't delete anything. Your listing just ends. You go to unsold listings and then you hit sell similar and you relist everything that was right there. I would do one and test it so you know how it works first. Don't go do it a whole bunch, but we do 200 at a time. So I do sell similar. I, I end listings 15 groups of 200 to get my 3,000 done on a daily basis these days. I've got enough. We've figured out. I've got enough free listings. I can do that. Even if it turns my whole store more than once a month, like 1.2% of my store, 102% or 120, whatever it would be, 120% of my store goes through. So meaning all my store is renewed plus another 20% every month is I think what we figured out. Um, again, I'm just trying to figure out what works best. I've been watching people me and somebody else have been watching people, I should say. I don't want to take credit for the whole thing, but we've been spending some time looking at there's some folks on on eBay right now that run one-day listings, and they're constantly ending and, and, and selling similar, the same items every single day of the week. Now, I, I can't imagine them doing that constantly like that and doing all that extra labor if they're not getting something out of it. So that's going to be one of our future tests there. I really think there's some other ways to, to navigate eBay's setup without having to pay eBay and with, with still being able to get good sales. This end, end listings and sell similar is one, as I said, sales and markdown, offers to watchers, and all of those stuff combined really do do wonders in ours right now. Um, I can't don't know what's going to happen when eBay does some more updates and all, but as of now, that does hold solid, solid for us anyway. Um, hey, Annie, how are you doing, Annie? Yeah, for those in Patreon, too, I've responded to everything in there, all the emails. Um, I did a private star review, so I'm not going to call it names, but so check your check your inbox on Patreon. Uh, I've got some questions for some of the items that were posted uh, for identification and pricing. I think I got to most of them. Yeah, I got to everyone. Everything's been responded to just before the show. T. Capping, well, thank you very kindly.
Banana Lana shops. I would seriously look at how much time you're you're spending on ten photos. If it's not needing ten photos, you're not doing yourself any favors, in my personal opinion. I've I've talked to far too many people who do exactly what I do. You want to speed this up. You want to get as many items up as you can. And if you're doing ten photos of everything, by the time you take them, sort the photos and adjust or whatever else you got to do, you you might be double dutying it and get the same effect with five photos. And again, I if it works for you, that's fine. But I, I'm saying for without any doubt, questionable doubt whatsoever, that I don't care if you're selling a vase clothing six eight photos bare bones max on almost anything i would put out there if i'm selling a lot and i got a whole bunch of items that would be about the only case i fill up with anything more than that i might use the 12 but if it's just one single item man i almost never do that for anything anything you look at my store there's mostly two or three photos five for for max and almost everything in my store um and, and again i talk to i talk to a lot of sellers thousands of them in, in this in four years and more and more people are coming to that same conclusion that the photo quantity isn't isn't as essential as you would think. That's why on Discogs, I don't even need to take a photo when I sell the items. So on, on Amazon, I don't need to take a photo and I sell the items. I use the stock photos. On eBay, I, don't, I can list a book and not have to worry about photos and all kinds of other stuff. So um, I'm telling you, the photo... You need to you need to efficiency. That's killing your efficiency. You need to be able to figure out which items you don't need to do that versus which ones you do. If you stop doing that, I would I would be shocked if you weren't surprised that you set your sales aren't changing, because I'm telling you I don't I no, no one I can't tell you when the last time someone's asked for a photo or I don't have enough details or complained about any of that stuff. You know, vases, shirt, whatever. I've never done done that many unless it was a lot that I had like a hundred different cards or something. It was the only way to display them all. No criticism. I'm not trying to try to try. I'm. Um, I think you should seriously think about looking into that because I'm telling you, that's a lot. I know eBay pushes, and I know there's probably other YouTubers will say you'll do this, you'll do that. I know probably ten times that it'll tell you the exact opposite. Most everybody I know doesn't do that, and I know people who do a lot of business. I mean, if I combine millions of sales on eBay, millions of dollars, and the people that I talk to combine, it's just a lot of a lot of volume of people. Nobody's starting to do that anymore. They're they're swerving away from that because it's it's not it's just a time waster. When you go to like if you're going to have your own site, you lose a lot of the data, you, not the photos or anything. Some the stuff doesn't transfer in. It doesn't cross list in like you would think it would. So. You don't need all that anymore. People don't even look at half that stuff. They'll look at the first few photos on their phone, and they won't want to click on the listing and all this other stuff. And, and people's attention span isn't there. Look at the bounce rate on a site. For like, if they're looking for something, the bounce rate, how many pages they get to in so many minutes before they leave the platform, they're not looking at 10, 15 photos. Their time is so crunched how much time they're on each page. The more, the more you put on a page for somebody to look at, the less time they will look at it. You, you'll just be spinning your wheels on it. I, I mean, I've, I've been into this for, for my whole life pretty much since reselling was reselling. Things have changed. There's a lot of practices that we used to do 10 years ago that I'd never do again. And, and the, the, the photo quantity is, is one of my pet peeves because, I, I, again, I like with the... I, I didn't see this conversation until after I already spoke about this. The... the the listing quality report. The number one thing they tell you is put more, put more photos up. And I'm telling you, for some items, the majority of what we saw, I, it's not going to do me any good. It's not going to change a single solitary thing in my sales. Just like filling in every single recommended item specific. If it's not going to get me sales, I'm not going to do it. You've got to prioritize your time to, to do the same thing. You've got to be able to simplify things. You've got to be able to limit the amount of time you're uploading photos, limit the amount of time you're taking photos, that's a pro and a con list. That's why I don't sell things that I would even have to remotely do that many. My, my max, I try to do no items these days that I need more than five photos. Unless, again, it's a lot. That's the one exception. I, you can look. All my new items, none of them have more than five photos. And my sales are, are five digits. I don't have the issues. I don't have drop-offs. I'm still doing fourth quarter numbers. My photo quantity has never affected my sales in any way, shape, or form. It's sped up my ability to sell more items. I can list more. I'm spending half the time. So, again, this is my business take on it, and what I would seriously recommend everybody who's doing massive quantities of photos at least look into. Give it a, give it a shot. Yeah, I'll try something at least once or twice, and if it looks like it works, I'm going to go with it. And, again, the, the consensus from the most, the, 
the, the vast majority of everybody I talk to, you got to know I talk to a lot of people, is the exact same thing. You don't need all those photos, regardless of what eBay says. Two glassy sisters, how are you doing? I believe you're local, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, Jennifer Yingling. Uh, you have handmade it. If you have handmade items, you can do sales too. You've just got to price differently. I make stuff too. I've got clown. I've got all kinds of stuff that we make here. I I've cast and made our own molds. We cast our own items. I hand paint. I do one offs. I do. I've, I should, I used to do portraits. I've done probably six hundred portraits in my day by hand, one by one, every single one. And I'll, I can set some prices. You know, I'll give you a discount if you buy more. Blah blah blah. There's you can you can market and adjust prices and do sales and promotions on anything. You've just got to be able to correctly price them or, or have a pricing structure that allows you some playroom. I don't try to do anything if I don't have playroom anymore. If I'm stuck selling it at this price, I don't usually buy it. That's, again, why I don't mess with clothing anymore. If I can't do a pricing structure where perceived value comes into play, I, chances are I'm going to steer away from it. Again, pros and cons, pros and cons. Do, I, I swear the pros and cons things I live by, no matter what I do. It's like doing cost-benefit analysis. Will my costs, uh, will my benefit be better than my costs at the end of the day is the gist of it. If I spend 10 bucks, are, are my returns on that going to be enough to compensate for my time, all of my investment and money and effort and everything else? I guess that's the point of it. Um... Let's see here. I promote pretty much all my clothing and shoes and lots of my hard goods. Some I do just to appease the eBay gods as it seems to be necessary. Evo, who knows? Yeah, I don't I do not do it, Danielle. I don't do it for... You can look at my store any day of the week. I haven't had a promoted listing in like two two plus years. I have not paid for promoted at all. And I, I'm, I'm not going to go back to it. And if, you know, it's just not my thing. I, I'm not going to bow down to it because I don't see the, the return, the investment. If, if you're using promoted listings, you don't have a baseline to show that it wouldn't have sold anyway. There's no way to know if that wouldn't have sold that day, no matter what, whether it was promoted or not. There's nothing out there that eBay can show you that says it wouldn't have sold unless it was promoted. I don't care how they put it, what they say, whether they're saying, well, they clicked on the promoted, so it must have been. I don't buy, I don't personally trust them on that aspect either. I don't trust that it tracks only to the one and not to the other because they can't get half the other stuff right. Well, thank you, Carol. It is a green screen. I will will fess up to that. Um, you know, I used to do just show the background and stuff, but it's tight. I even for me just to look at it. it I, I the wife calls it the dungeon. Um, it's just shelving after shelving. It goes all over the place. It goes down hallways and into other rooms. It's just it's just shelving. It's not attractive. I don't have the fancy office. I don't didn't spend the time to stick stuff on the wall or or any of that other stuff that a lot of other folks do. No disrespect. I, they do what they do. I I maximize because of the volume of stuff that we do. I maximize the amount of space I have for storage. That's my number one thing. Wall space. There is no wall space. It's all shelving. It's shelving with just enough space to legally be able to walk through with the, the footage for the Disabilities Act. But other than that, it's it's all covered everywhere. Everything is shelving in, in the area that we're at. So I, it, it's just ugly looking. You know, it's a necessity. So I do the green screen. I've had a lot of people ask me that. So I thought I'd, I'd reiterate why that is. Um, and I like doing the, the artsy videos, I guess, more. So I like, I always wished I could have worked in the film industry after seeing the sets and the models from from Nightmare Before Christmas and Tim Burton was there and everything. It was a real nice experience. But anyway, I, I love that stuff. So I like playing around with that kind of stuff. To me, it's cool. And you know I, I flip and put clips in my videos and all kinds of stuff too. I like that. Yeah, classic rock lover. I think buyers are more worried about gas prices, inflation overall. And again, that's why necessities versus luxury is going to be the the deciding factor on how well you're going to do that that's that's it that's it those are the deciding factors if you're going to do well or you're not going to do well what are you selling right now now i'm going to throw another crimp in here for those who, who are selling clothing oops hang on i think we got something 
Well, Banana Lana Shops, well, thank you. You didn't, you didn't have to do that, but thank you very kindly for the 1999 Super Chat. If you need to have more photos, do it. But I, I'm, I'm telling you, for the majority of everything, you could probably get away with half those photos if you've got the five good photos. If you've got an item that you might have to show a bottom and top, you might have to run six. But, man, I try to keep it down to five. I might show it an angle shot or something. Close-up shot, no other junk in the photo. White, bright, clear, nice lighting. That's what you need. Look on Amazon. Look at how much stuff sells on Amazon with three and four and just a handful of photos. I'm, I'm not preaching this trying to hurt any store. This is this is seriously what I fully believe and see from, from man, I talk to so many people. I just, I, I, everybody that I've talked to, more and more have come to that conclusion that eBay, for whatever reason, it's a push or maybe it makes them feel better or maybe they seriously think it. I don't see that. I don't see that. I don't see them tracking the amount of photos that you have in the first place. Maybe they wrote some script in there. Maybe it's possible. But unless it's going to help them gain money from promoted listings, or some way to advertise. I don't see them doing that. Everything they do is is fixed, fixated on getting more revenue coming in through promoting it or through advertising payments. And they've said that. They've said that. Again, thank you very kindly. I honestly, sincerely appreciate that. Description, description. Don't skimp on. If there's something wrong with it, list every every little aspect that's wrong with it. If it's shown in the images, put hey, check the images themselves. If there's a crease in something, right, there's a crease in something. If there's a hole in it, right, there's a hole in it. You can brief it. All that stuff goes in the condition box at the top, not down in the description box. As much information as you can get up in the, in the condition box, you'll be better off. If you're looking from a phone, that's usually what they look at. They don't Half the time, they don't want to click to go into another screen to look at the, the description box. So I figured out, hey, it's, it's better. I put the sizes in the condition box and all sorts of other things these days because that works better for, for viewing it. You know, Nobody wants to do an extra click these days. That's why eBay adding in extra clicks for us to do stuff, it, it adds more time and more effort. Like adding stuff in to a buyer's experience adds more time, adds more effort. It tells me when they don't look at that that eBay doesn't know what the bounce rate is for their own site. Maybe one person does, but the rest of the, the, rest of the place doesn't. A bounce rate is important. Look at everybody out there. If you don't know what a bounce rate is, look up bounce rate. Look up eBay's bounce rate. Compare that to say Etsy, Amazon, some of the smaller sites, and you'll see what I mean. Look at what a bounce rate is. These are all. These are any advertising firm is going to tell you bounce rate. It's important. All that stuff means something. I wish I could express it. I'm like, Atlas Attic again. You didn't have to do that either. I honestly and sincerely appreciate the the ten dollars super chat. Again, you guys already support me very nicely. I do appreciate that. So, again, I, I honestly don't remember it's there until that little thing pops up. So, uh, again, this this is this is what I seriously see and what, what, again, I don't care what any other YouTuber says. They can say or feel however they want. They're allowed to have their opinions. You're allowed to listen or to believe or follow whoever you want. I, I wouldn't say it if I didn't live by what I say because that's me. I'm not here trying to promote something or take your money for any use. Uh, again, you don't have to do that. I, I appreciate it greatly, though, but, um, you know, that's just how I see it. Uh, let's pop on down here see if we got anything else. Uh, Jennifer never had any luck on Etsy, never sold anything there, maybe ignorant on the process there. I think Etsy takes time, and you have to have more quantity up, just like on eBay. The more quantity of items you have on Etsy, the better off you will be. If you, like, let's say, are doing Shopify or something and haven't been on Etsy, and you pump out all your listings to Etsy, you're going to get a bunch of sales right off the bat. I would almost guarantee you if you have quantity. So let's say you import a 1,000 items into Etsy, you're going to get some movement. You, you will probably pay for the first months, several months of everything, you, the first four months of your insertion fees will probably be paid for pretty quickly if you list a bunch bulk. That would be my personal take on it, experience-wise and from what I've heard and personally seen from others. Um, it depends on what you sell, though, too, I guess. you got to think about that, too. I like Etsy. We buy on Etsy, too, honestly. Oh, uh, yeah, my feed's all over. Let's go back on down. I do free shipping, don't have much room for big sales. Depending on what you're selling, I would be a little cautious on free shipping. When the when the price of shipping costs, supplies, shipping fees goes up, if you don't alter that, your, your, your profit margins are going to go down and down and down and down the longer something sits. 
that would be my only consideration. If you're clothing or something, yeah, you probably have to. If you're home goods, you probably have to. Um, I do look at the numbers and compare those who are doing it versus those who aren't. And I don't always trust eBay's numbers. You can go look at some of the big sellers and see what they're doing. I look at my competitors. If a big seller is selling quantity and he's able to get away with free shipping at this said price, I'll use that as a baseline for me and see what I can do from there. You know, there's always options for everybody. Uh, Scott Williams, I do promoted listings for items that I have quantity of. I do 1% just so the similar items that I promote show up at the bottom of the listing. Well, there you go. That's a, that's a perfect example there. Uh, as I said, I know people that just do 1% all the time. I don't know. Uh, no one here can say, including myself, whether you'd 100% do better doing that versus uh, sales and markdown. I know for me it would. I can't say for anybody else, but we've done it. We did promoted listings. I didn't see any difference in drop at all. It wasn't like, hey, I stopped promoted and everything just tanked. I started doing other stuff. I, instead of doing promoted, I do other things. I do all the other steps that I've talked about. Um, I can see the quantity. If you're doing, let's say, the advanced promoted listings where you pay per click and you're using keyword, keyword basically, if you've got uh, a static listing that's always there because you've got a thousand of the same items, those type of promoted listings I would recommend. I would literally recommend them because it's going to be worth your while. If you're paying per click for a couple items or you know a small niche that, you, that once it's sold, you're done, you're losing the best aspect of doing those types because it builds up you know interest and small bits of trending and other data and and you know the more people that look for those same terms and all this other stuff there's it builds up a footprint and you know there's more to it so that's why i would recommend it for something like that off oh, marty uh jiminy flip it another fellow youtuber here good guy as as all been on my show uh offers to watchers are what makes ebay viable I would say yes, but I would say without doing end and sell similar, I wouldn't get the offers to watchers to send out as much as I would by doing that. Um, again, and that's that's the only reason I do we, we do that is to get the attention to it. That's the only reason I do the sales and markdown because the, when I do a sales and markdown, I get some sales, but the majority of, of sales I get even from a sales and markdown are me sending an offer to a watcher. So if you're if you've got a like three x price structure. I can come in and do a 20% discount on the item. It flags it on eBay the first day. Hey, discount first day, first day. It runs for two days. Second day, it says ends today, blah, blah, blah. You better get it. It's in red. And then I can actually take a counter offer, even at that point. Even if I take half off, I'm still getting over what my one-third take-home would be on that item. Again, you, you've got to play the market. You've got to have some, some pricing structure to do that. Again, you don't have to do that, but that's just it works great for us because I I'm always playing the perceived value. I know the demographics of who I who buy for me, and uh, I mean all that stuff's out there. You can you can look into it. Um, again, thank you again, Banana Lana Shops and Atlas Attic, both of you guys, gals. Sorry. Now let me pop back down here. I'm gonna end it off in just a few moments here. Um, how do you determine what it's worth or what's worth selling on Etsy? Uh, it's pretty expensive per item. Well, you're paying on Etsy four months of listing in advance. You're pretty much forced to advertise. The percentage is a little higher. So I would stick to items that are more unique, interesting, different. Um, some, some things I can only find on Etsy. Uh, the crinkle cut uh, wired tinsel. I've never seen it anywhere else in this country other than on Etsy. That's what they use to make Victorian reproduction Christmas ornaments and all sorts of things. There's a lot of stuff like that, like true mica. If you do recreations and you do your own vintage stuff, people. the reason I know this is because I sell stuff, Victorian die cuts and clippings and stuff and scrap, to people that make stuff out of that. And, man, I've, I've had some long conversations with folks, and then they've, they've said, hey, check this out, check that out, and I've looked at Etsy and this and that. I mean, there, there's there's certain things that do extremely well on Etsy. People who buy from me will buy this stuff from Etsy from me, or from, from eBay from me. They'll go to Etsy and then buy just this stuff from Etsy. Um, famous people buy stuff. Crafters and, and artistic people do, I would say, much better on Etsy in some items than they would on, on eBay. And I think Etsy is great for, like, Christmas, holiday, seasonal, um, movie-themed items, 
stuff like that. Like if you create costumes or stuff like that does does better on Etsy, I personally feel. Um, some toys do do very well. Now, most toy-wise, uh, I do would say kids' toys would be a better choice, like vintage kid, kid, kid toys. Action figures would be better on eBay or on some of the other platforms out there, in all honesty. But, again, you're going to have to hunt and pack at what works best for you personally. I could say craft or, you know, like sci-fi stuff sells better here or there, but it may only sell better here or there for me because of the specific types of items I'm selling. Again, pros and cons for whichever site you're doing. Um, pros and cons run run our business. You know, is it practical? Is it cost-benefit analysis of this or that, this versus that? That's how you figure it out. Which, which one gives me the highest ROI? If I'm going to a store and, I, I, you know, I, I want to be the first one here or there, whichever item gives me the highest ROI with the highest sell-through rate as a category, not specific item, but as a category, that's what I'm going for first. If I got a chance to get go to location A or location B, which one gives me the highest ROI? Which item gives me the highest highest ROI? That's what people do. When you when people are looking for items to RA retail arbitrage on Amazon, if I'm out looking and I I don't want to hit I don't I want to limit the amount of ground I got to cover to to find items how many stores I have to go to 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 buy it out. I'm gonna look at which items will give me the, the highest ROI. I'm going to look at which stores have more of the, the those items versus the other items, and those are the ones I'm going to go after first. You, you you maximize your time. So if spending an hour, you can get items that will will make you $100 more ROI and they'll sell versus items that will make you less, $100 less, which one are you going to go to? That's, that's what should be your model for everything, for what you're selling, what you're doing, how you list it, whether uh, f uh, free shipping is better for you or not. You can compare. You can list a couple hundred items with it, a couple hundred items without it. Whatever you're doing, compare. A, B comparison. You know, that you can do that on, on YouTube with your videos even. We got over 400 people in house. 215 thumbs up. If you're enjoying the conversation, please hit the thumbs up. I'm going to end it off here in like two more minutes. Um, yeah, 10% is pretty high. You might get a better result. I don't know. Again, I don't mess with promoted listings at all. Jennifer, I have success uh, with offers to watchers. Well, offers to watchers was was a game changer, like Marty was saying too. I'm, I I use that more than anything else. That gives me more routine sales than pretty much anything else, other than just random people buying stuff. I guess if I have to do something, the offers to watchers is well worth the time every single time I do it. Um, yeah, there's nothing wrong with testing theories either. So you might want to test to ten percent. You might want to test to five percent. I've had people tell me they've tried 20 and 30 percent, but I'd I'd never do that. I'd never I'd feel weird doing that. Uh, I sell vintage NOS tools and have seen no slowing of sales at all. Tools are um, a necessity, but not only a necessity, it's a it's a work, it's a it's a deductible for a business. Tools are one of those. If you, if you're talking like socket wrenches and stuff like, I'm gonna end it after this one. If you're talking about stuff like that, they don't sell. They they don't have a slowdown period. Everybody needs tools. You can't, if, if you're a car mechanic, it doesn't matter whether you can afford it or not. You're not going to be a car mechanic if you break your socket wrench and you don't have a replacement. So tools are one of those categories that I don't think dies off at all. If you've got certain brands, as most of you should know, you can swap them out and, and you know, lifetime warranties on a lot of that stuff. So tools are, are a cutthroat business up here because of that. I can't get tools from any of my pickers. There's not a single picker that I've been dealing with that I can get tools from. None, none. And you know, so again, that's that's up to you what what your 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 sourcing ability is. But I know people get tools and I can't get them because they've been dealing with the same tool guys or gals for decades. Someone would have to pass away, God forbid, and I would never want that. But that's the only way, or they'd have to move for me to even get a shot at tools from from certain folks like that. I don't see the opportunity to get them. I'd love to get them, but. You know that there'd be a learning curve for me, but but in general, they always sell tools. Always, I can, and if I wouldn't be able to sell tools online, I can guarantee you I can move those any day of the week around here. Even the the pawn shops and the junk stores around here, there's always a bin of dirty old tools there. I know which brands at least of those to get, and I will swap some of those out occasionally if they're dirt cheap. But um, I'm going to let it go at that. I know we had some issues in the beginning of the show. I will probably try and edit that out. Um, 
may not be till tomorrow. I will probably have to put at least a link in there so everybody can hop to when it starts out fine. But I do appreciate everybody coming on. Again, if you haven't hit the like button, please slam that like button. Hopefully you're doing well. I would seriously think about doing some proactiveness to adjust and, and look at your store and see what you can do to get sales coming in now while people still have more money. That's my best take on that. Don't let it happen where your sales are already tanking for you to take some action and then figure out what you need to do or what you can do. So I'm concerned. I don't want everybody failing. Everybody everybody has a, a stake in this who's a reseller. This pays my bills. It feeds my kids. It feeds my wife. And, and everybody here, the roof over our head, puts gas in my car. This I have to keep going with this. And I love it. So it's great that way of it. But anyway, I'm going to let it go. And I do appreciate everybody coming on and putting up with the issues from the beginning of the show.